I think it's fascinating working for IHPC because it's a rather small organization. It doesn't have any major bureaucracy. And I'm, at times I'm astonished at the kind and the amount of work that we get done and about the positive uptake that this gets from the local communities on the, who, who use this on the ground to provide better care. So I'm the chair of the board of directors, which means that um, I'm sort of responsible for the main political strategies that we want to follow and for the projects that we want to kick off. I think the work of IHPC is so important because nobody else does it. So you need somebody who's really concerned about that there's not only people in rich countries getting palliative care if they are lucky, but that everybody gets access to good care. And there's actually two directions that I think IHPC has to take. One is on the kind of international global level where we have to target the major international stakeholders like the UN or the WHO and try to get them to include palliative care in every single policy paper that they do and then take care that it trickles down to the individual statements and individual procedural papers that they produce. And the other is that we still have to work with national governments, with pioneers in the field, in the developing countries, for example with the workshops that we do, the last one in the Caribbean, where we try to get them to do action plans how to advance palliative care in their country with the meager resources that they have. All these theoretical discussions about lack of access to opioids doesn't mean nothing for the politicians who work in the UN or in the WHO high-level departments. But if you can show them a picture of somebody in India or in Africa or in Latin America who doesn't have access to opioids, who is suffering miserably, who doesn't have heat or money or food, then that really is an eye-opener and it makes only sense if that connection is maintained. There is so, so much anxiety, you know, that people are afraid about opioids in general, about talking about death and dying, about acknowledging that people die. There are cultural issues like not talking about death in certain Asian cultures, um, about, you know, not deciding or medicine is for cure, not for care. And the thing underlying it all is really a lack of education of healthcare professionals and of societal attitudes that are not open to acknowledging death and dying are part of life. Whether you can access palliative care or not makes all the difference in the world for somebody who's severely ill or dying, but also for the whole family around him, for all his friends, and sometimes even for the whole village because it's such a burden. And so I think having home care workers that come by, having community nurses that can look at the patient, having opioids that can be taken at home, and then the patient is not in pain, is not crying, then that makes all the world of difference. So I think every single patient where we can sort of get care provided through our members, that is really an, a real gain.